I'd like to invite the second debate, please. Mr. Faiz Abu Awad and Mr. Peter Lyons. Uh, they'll be debating mobile advertising by operators. Is also dead on arrival. The, 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 the theme of the debates is death uh, today. And no future for mobile advertising by operators. Uh, agreeing with the motion is Roy Zakka on his own because uh, Rohit could not make it. He had uh, an urgent, an, uh, an urgent uh, uh, engagement in Dubai. And uh, disagreeing with the motion is uh, Faiz Abu Awad and Peter Lyons. Peter, you have to sit. Uh... My name is Roy Zakka and I'm the founder and CEO of Ubanquity. Um, we provide uh, mobile banking solutions. Uh, for banks and financial uh, institutions and, and the mobile payment uh, as well for mobile operators and uh, hence that's the reason I'm here. Um, so today the uh, question is um, advertising by uh, mobile operators uh, in the region. Um, advertising as uh, operators are doing it today is broken by design. Um, most of the subscribers in the region are postpaid, uh, prepaid customers. So um, if you look at percentages in most of the region, you find it's in the upper 90% where the uh, subscribers are prepaid. And most of the mobile operators don't have a lot of data about their subscribers, about their prepaid subscribers, um, beyond the um, ID that they get when a subscriber first signs up this is as much information as they know about their subscribers. Um, and the only advertising that you see today on, um, on mobile phones is bulk SMS. So if you look at, uh, I'm gonna take Jordan since we are in, in Jordan here. Um, roughly the market size for bulk SMS in total is about four million uh, JDs. That's uh, roughly, and of that, only 20% is advertising. Hello everyone, my name is Peter Lyons. I am the Director of Spectrum Policy for the GSMA. Today I'm speaking on my own behalf. There is a very good dedicated team at the GSMA responsible for mobile advertising related issues. They are probably the best to speak about this, but I will give it a shot from my own view. Okay. So I have some prepared remarks here. Value creation and business models for advertising are undergoing significant shifts across the world. Advertisers see their audience increasingly using mobile devices and the services of mobile operators and are looking for ways to differentiate their own offering. In many countries, there are many more people who have and use mobile phones than watch TV or own a TV or read the newspaper. Attempting to bypass the mobile operators in the mobile advertising value chain provides advertisers with inferior results and inferior return on investment. Now we all know about the over-the-top players. We know about Google. We know Google Analytics, for example, can provide information about the operating system and the handset used to display a mobile ad. The amount of time the ad was displayed, the country, IP address, etc. But really, no information, no real information about who the users are and no information about interests and habits is available for Google Analytics, unless that person is a registered, signed-in Google account user. Also, from the end-user experience, off-the-shelf mobile advertising campaigns without a prominent operator role is also poor. This means you can't, you, you, the user does not have the ability to opt in, opt out, or change the preferences of how many ads they want to receive, what kind of ads they want to receive. Operators are the owners of key assets for mobile advertisers, subscriber knowledge. Now my friend here said that the operators, because the prepaid customers do not have significant information about their subscribers. Well, I would say that at the very least, they have the name, they have the age, they have the sex, they have information about when you're browsing the internet, your behavior, your browsing patterns, where you are, hobbies, income for, for postpaid customers. It's far more than just a list of telephone numbers for bulk SMS ads. Also, the subscriber relationship, I think, is key because operators have a trusted customer care and billing relationship with the end user. 
This enables the, the operator to bundle services in order to enhance the monetization and self-management of a service. Real-time triggers. Now, my friend mentioned prepaid users. Let's take an example of when you can combine location-based information with a billing relationship. A prepaid user wants to go top up their prepaid account. At that particular time, that prepaid user is attentive and receptive to an offer for watching a particular ad or for receiving information, sponsored information, that user can receive additional minutes for use. I think that's, that's, a very, that's a very interesting proposition that a lot of people would be willing to receive that information to get more minutes. Operators also offer multiple channels to reach the end user, not just SMS and MMS, but also enabling web internet access or enabling mobile internet access for some kind of sponsored message. Finally, for the advertiser, there's the ability to get data, not just post-campaign reports, but also real-time information about click-through, call-through, text-through information about what, what, what are the people actually doing in response to these, these campaigns. Real-time analytics allows advertisers to modify a campaign midstream to maximize the effectiveness and ROI. And my position is that if you want to maximize your ROI, you do not cut the mobile operators out of this, out of the mobile advertising value chain. Thank you. Please. Okay. The the way I see this, um, allow me to send this. I think uh, at least I can do it. So, uh, two days of you listening to people is to address you while sending. Um, the way I see this, this is an argument that has. That this is an argument that, this, that has several parts. First, uh, it's about the advertising industry. Second, it's about the mobile advertising industry. And third, it's whether uh, an operator is a capable partner in this industry and whether, um, to address the issue, whether mobile advertising is born dead if done by operators. I would present to you evidence that the advertising industry in the Arab world is broken. This is an industry that has been stuck at the you know, boundaries of a billion dollar or, or a three billion dollar a year. Estimates range, we don't even have proper statistics. Uh, our measurement tools are flawed. Uh, it's a well known fact that you can actually pay to get a report that says that your medium is performing this and that so that you can get you know, uh, budgets allocated uh, in advertising for one program or another. This is an industry that is not performing well. It's an industry that is fragmented. It's an industry that has not actually delivered on the promise of performing value for the consumers. It's not by uh, chance that uh, large free-to-air channels are struggling to cover their costs. It is because they are part of an industry that is broken. If you want to compare, I'll just take Google's numbers and $80 billion a year in revenues, single year, compared to all of us together working, you know, running in this rat race for $3 billion. Digital is minute, by the way. And it only did not take off if it were not for, or it never took off if it were not for the fact that um, uh, actually the big players stepped in. We didn't see a huge jump in our online expenditure till Yahoo stepped in. And then when Google came in, you know, all rules changed. We suddenly started saying, seeing people actually spending online. And with all of this, we're still stuck at this 2%. And of that, there's a very small slither that is dedicated to mobile. Now, what does it take to actually do uh, proper business? It is a good idea. So is mobile advertising a good idea or is it a bad idea? Okay, we need good funding. Operators have tons of funding. They're all doing well in this region. And we need good people. And we're here. So the components are here. And there is no reason why operators in specific would cast a negative light on mobile advertising. Now mobile advertising in here is, is set to, to, to flourish because we have an abundance of high-end devices. We have an abundance of connectivity. Even the second-hand market on devices, by the way, 
because of our you know, uh, preference to hold the latest device. There's a second-hand market that enables people with lower income to have high-end devices. And uh, uh, there is investment in networks that is continuing. We have 4G in Saudi Arabia, we have 4G in the UAE. So uh, what is it about mobile advertising and operators that will not make it work? And I, you know, I fail to see what Mr. Zaka's point is regarding prepaid and postpaid. Because it all, all it takes is an injection of MSISDN, IDing the, the, the user of the phone to know, you know how many times he calls locally, how many times he calls abroad. You can even have access to the location of, of the device. And honestly, operators are operating in a, in a vacuum when it comes to, regu to the regulation of mobile uh, marketing and mobile advertising. So all of the components for a, for a huge success for mobile advertising exist. And that is the case that I'd like to present to you. Thank you. Um, thank you for the uh, differing point of view. Um, I was uh, specifically speaking about the way uh, advertising is being done today. So uh, to take the first example that the uh, first gentleman uh, used, he said uh, when a customer goes to top up uh, their phone, this is an opportunity to show them an ad, uh, etc. Um, most recharging of, uh, of uh, airtime that I've seen, most top-up that I've seen is either a text message or it's a USSD channel that you have to put in a USSD code and do it. So the delivery of, a, uh, of an ad, you need a vehicle, you need a mechanism to deliver an ad to a subscriber. Um, today, just because you know the location of your subscriber um, doesn't mean that you can give them a great ad that they're going to respond to just because you know their location. What I was trying to say earlier is the way it's being done today by operators, it just doesn't work, it's broken. Uh, what operators need is they need some sort of vehicle, some sort of application that's very sticky. This application will, uh, subscribers would want to use it uh, quite a bit, at least once a day. Uh, this application would know about your uh, Facebook, uh, your social graph, your Twitter, uh, your LinkedIn. Uh, it would know about your location. It would know about uh, the people that you're calling. When you combine that with location, with the rest of the demographics, then yes, you can have more compelling advertising. And to put in a shameless plug-in here, we have a whole platform for specifically for mobile advertising uh, that gives you real-time analytics and demographics uh, with an application, a self-care application for mobile operators. I apologize, this is my shameless plug-in here. Thank you. So we'll open it now for uh, questions from the audience, if we have any. Let's put the question on the screen, please, without uh, starting the voting. So, to frame it again, it's basically, it's broken now, and the side that says no future suggests that operators will take very long to figure it out, and by then it could be too late, because the relationship would have been already cemented with the social media players, with the applications, and so on, and it would have been, it would have been too late for the operators. The ones disagreeing think now the operators are not doing it properly now, but it, it has a bright future of the, if the operators put uh, the needed, uh, the needed uh, uh, fundamentals in place. And do you have any questions? Final comments? Dr. Ibrahim? Well, actually, I want to comment on, on mobile advertising, and I want the views of the uh, two uh, opposing parties on um, this is a spam and uh, regulators usually pushed by um, public pressure try to control this because if you cannot opt out um, and we see this in Saudi market and I'm sure it's the same in Jordan so regulators are trying to um, uh, make it difficult for operators to advertise using uh, this exclusive SMS or, or other uh, uh, mobile channels directly to their customers. So I think this is another pressure uh, on the uh, uh, 
mobile advertising. And um, I'd be interested to um, hear uh, what the two opposing uh, uh, views have on, on this, that is to junk mail or junk messaging. just so that we don't get sucked into the discussion about SMS, an unsolicited SMS. This is not in any way a discussion about unsolicited SMS. This is a discussion about mobile advertising. This is about injecting a service, which is an advertising message, in a service that is being presented by the operator. This is as some of the operators are already trying in the region, a service where people opt in to receive messages specifically. We're not talking about spam. I stood here uh, a couple of years ago and, and started with an appeal for operators to please stop killing the value of mobile advertising by sending unsolicited SMSs. What we are talking about here is using SMS as a vehicle to spark the interest of users connect to it a link that will take you to the mobile web that will give you more information about something that you've asked for, something that makes sense to what you've been doing, where you are, or, or what have you been consuming as, as a media. This is not a talk about SMS uh, as, you know, uh, broadcast. Okay? Uh, the, we have very strict regulations with the uh, Mobile Advertising uh, Association regarding, regarding that, and uh, I think that business is on the decline and it should die soon, and regulators should help us put it to sleep, because it's, it's been too long. Um, I think what, what you, the point you've raised about unsolicited SMS exactly highlights the point why the operators need to be in the mobile advertising value chain. In the case of this bulk SMS, you have an advertiser who goes to a SMS aggregator, basically somebody sitting in some island somewhere in the world with a box full of several hundred or several thousand SMS. They can send these bulk SMS anywhere in the world. The difference between working with the operators, the operator, rather than just sending completely uh, untargeted spam the operator actually can work with the subscriber, with the customer, to opt in or to opt out and provide relevant targeted information to the advertiser so that the ads are relevant, so that the information is relevant, so that I'm not getting a text message about going on a cruise in Brazil or, or something completely, that, that's a waste of everyone's time and money. And I agree, I think a business model based on just sending out as much information that's not relevant Ultimately, even if, even if the cost per SMS is nothing, you're still not gonna achieve results. And that business model will disappear. And the, 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 the advertising industry should work with the operators to do something more targeted, more relevant. Um, yeah, again, uh, spam is one thing. Uh, this is, unfortunately, this is what you get most of the time from most of the operators. In most countries you go to, it is a problem. So definitely an opt-in, opt-out mechanism has to be in there. But uh, still the, ad, the analytics that an operator can get, no one else can get. Um, even uh, passive analytics that they can get. Advertisers don't have access to this information. The uh, operators can get into social media, they can harvest a lot of data. So for example, if I were to post uh, on my wall, I were to post uh, that I'm traveling, uh, let's say, to Brazil. Um, if the operator gets through uh, some analytics engine can capture this information, they can send me targeted stuff instead of if I'm single, um, I'm not married, and they start sending me information about diapers for kids that would not be relevant for me. But if, I'm, if I say on my tweets that I'm traveling to Brazil next week, they can start sending me information about Brazil that will be a very relevant to what I'm about to do. So the operators need to um, look into social media, location, intent, 
Uh, there's a lot of machine uh, learning algorithms out there that can help with prediction. They're very good at uh, predicting what some people are about to do. Actually, Facebook now can predict 15 days ahead of time uh, who's about to break up with their loved one uh, from the analytics that they're getting. Thank you. So, uh, it's time to decide. No future or there's a big future. A or one is no future. B or two is there is no future. Uh, there is a big future, sorry. One is there is a big future. Two is uh, you can figure it out yourself. <laughs> I have five seconds for my shameless plug -in. If you are interested in, in changing your SMS communication as an operator into a media-rich experience for your receivers of, of SMS, for the recipients of your SMS, please come and contact me. We make it easy and straightforward and I'll take care of you. And the results are?